Hello and welcome to another ECG in a minute video. This time it's going to be an ECG in five minutes because we've got a really important abnormality and three ECGs for you to look at. Now we're going to talk about conduction tissue disease. In particular, we're going to cover bifascicular block and that famous misnomer, trifascicular block. So we're going to look at three ECGs that illustrate these abnormalities and a system for interpreting ECGs that will make sure you never miss either of these abnormalities ever again. So let's get started. First ECG here, let's have a little look at it. Now I'm gonna bring this up in a minute, but the first thing you'll notice is, is that this QRS complex is prolonged. It's more than three small squares, greater than 120 milliseconds. It's got, um, one hand, it's got a little S wave followed by a big tall R wave in V1. It's right bundle branch block. Okay, so we know it's right bundle branch block. Next thing you've got to check when you see right bundle branch block is the axis of the ECG. And that's really important for detecting bifascicular block. So what's the axis? If you watched my previous ECG basics videos, you'll know how to check. So we look at lead one and see if the QRS complex is predominantly upwards, and it is. Then we look at lead two and see if the QRS complex is predominantly upwards, and it's not, it's downwards. So that means we've got left axis deviation in this case, all right? So you've got right bundle branch block, you've got left axis deviation, guess what? That tells you you've got bifascicular block. There are three fascicles, aren't there? There's the right bundle branch, and then in the left bundle branch, you've got the left anterior fascicle and the left posterior fascicle. If you block the right bundle branch and one of the two fascicles on the left, then you've got bifascicular block, and that's what you've got here. So it's an, it's an indication of fairly extensive conduction tissue disease. And this patient may be prone to cardiogenic syncope. If those last threads of the conduction system fall apart, the patient may go into complete heart block and then uh, collapse and lose consciousness. And it may need a pacemaker. So if you spot that abnormality, the next most important thing to have a look at is the PR interval. Have you got a normal PR interval? Is there any sign of any heart block? So here on this particular ECG, we can see that the PR interval is still within normal. So that means we've just got bifascicular block. Okay, it's not trifascicular block. But let's move on to the next ECG and we will take a look. Here we go. Brought it right up for you so you can see it big. You've got right bundle branch block, QRS complex, more than 120 milliseconds, more than three small squares. Look at the RSR pattern in V1. It tells you it's right bundle branch block. Next, we're going to look at the axis. Look at lead one. It's upright. That's okay. Look at lead two. It's predominantly downwards. That's not okay. That's left axis deviation. Okay, so we've got right bundle branch block and left axis deviation. That's bifascicular block. Let's have a look at the PR interval. Okay, it's prolonged. It's over 200 milliseconds. It's over one big square there. You can see just about. So this is trifascicular block. This is a famous misnomer because we've got a bit of AV block. Now, what do we mean by that? Because trifascicular block doesn't mean you blocked three fascicles. If you block all three fascicles, you've got complete heart block. So it's a complete and utter misnomer when we say trifascicular block. It means you've got AV block as well as two fascicles gone. And that's what we've got here. We've got a bit of uh, uh, AV block, first degree block. And in fact, look at that here. You've got a bit of a gap here on this screen. Let's see if I can get my right hand to this one. Um, you see this big pause here where there's no P wave. This looks like a junctional escape beat to me. So this patient does seem to have significant conduction tissue disease. All right, so we've got the hang of this, I think. Let's look at one last ECG so we can uh, finesse the principle. Here we've got a patient who's got right bundle branch block. And by the way, they've also got an anterior STEMI. Have a look at that in V2, V3, V4, anterior ST elevation. So they've got a STEMI, so you're gonna get on and treat that. But you've also got right bundle branch block. So while you're interpreting this, you've seen the right bundle branch block, look at the axis. So let's go to lead one, it's predominantly downwards, that's bad. Lead two, predominantly downwards, that's bad. We've got an extreme axis. Which way is it going, right or left? Have a look at AVR, that's going upwards. So it looks like it's really extreme right axis deviation. Okay, so we've got extreme axis deviation, right bundle branch block, that's bifascicular block. Let's look at the PR interval and it's prolonged. It's just over 200 milliseconds on this ECG. So once again, we've got trifascicular block. And when the patient is symptomatic, 
then we at the very least should be doing electrophysiological studies and the patient is likely to need a pacemaker. So there we go, in a nutshell, I've covered bifascicular block and that famous misnomer, trifascicular block. And if you follow this system, you'll never miss it again on the ECG. Thank you.